Hey guys, today I want to go over safeties. Uh, we're about to go into 2021, and I figured it's time to uh, try to talk about how to keep your engines safe. Um, so I, uh, I, I want to put together, you know, a couple different examples of uh, safety things that I do in cars that um, that I deal with. So we'll just hop right into it. This is on uh, V6 software, and um, a lot of people, a lot of people are always worried about oil pressure. That's the number one thing, right? So what some people wind up doing is they go into sensor scalings and warnings, they go over to oil pressure, and then they enable a timing offset of 30 degrees. Don't do that. So if you don't already have the advanced ICF uh, in your, your global file, go to toolbox, add individual config, advanced, and go to default. We already have it. So I'm going to show you some, you know, some advanced tables that you can do for uh, oil pressure, safety, or uh, over RPM. We're going to go over a, a bunch of different options here. So uh, you can use your uh, 2D or 1D gear by table, uh, per gear table. I mean, uh, so because you're not going to, you're typically not going to use up all these advanced tables. So here's table eight. Um, what I do is a fuel flow offset. Uh, with an x-axis RPM and a y-axis oil pressure. So what we're doing here is at 1,200 RPM and below, we're not doing anything for oil pressure safety, nothing. Because if you're sitting there idling and there's no oil pressure, you're going to hear it, uh, or you should be seeing a, a, you know something pop up on your screen. You should have programmed a little warning light to pop up on your screen. So um, it really the problem lies in... Uh, in you know high a little bit higher rpm so the reason why i like to do a 2d table is because i use oil pressure here rpm here and then a fuel flow offset so if you don't have any fuel you don't have any fire which means the engine shuts off so until it gets back down here to 1200 rpm so um so what this is doing is if we look here at the graph it's a little easier to see oops hold on click here graph there we go it's a little easier to see in the graph but I'm knocking 4,000 pounds per hour of fuel out of the engine, okay? So it's taking all the fuel out of the engine. So um, by knocking all the fuel out of the engine, um, it is going to stop accelerating, and it is going to come back down to earth uh, with your no oil pressure going on. So that's one way of doing oil pressure safety. This is the way I like to do it. Uh, another option we're going to look at a safety output that a couple other people have talked about. Um, been doing this for a while, and uh, it works. And there's a lot of different options that you can add into this, and it's you don't have to run, run any wires or anything. So, go to the I/O ICF, go to outputs, and um, I created this one here, you know, a minute ago before we uh, before we started on this video. Um, I just made a new global file. Gators bitches better be wearing jimmies. Um, so we make a type ground, name it safety out, configure. So this is going to activate based off of any of these, uh, um, there we go, any of these uh, instances that happens, okay? So this output will activate, and we're going to get into what it activates here in a second, but this output will activate when closed loop compensation is above 25%. That's just an arbitrary number I pulled. You shouldn't have, if you got a high powered vehicle, closed loop should not be 25% off, period. You shouldn't even be letting closed loop try to get away that far, okay? Um, this output will activate when coolant pressure is above 50 PSI. So if you've got a coolant pressure sensor in your radiator and the radiator tank or whatever, if it goes over 50 PSI, this output's gonna activate. Um, this car, I'm just trying to simulate as if you were street driving it, you know, just kind of giving you a couple options. This output will activate when coolant temp sensor is above 210. So we don't want it to boil over too. Um, if your car runs close to 205, don't set it at 210. You know what I mean? Uh, use a little sense here. Uh, most of the cars that, um, that I deal with at street drive, they all run pretty cold. So 210 is very hot for that. Um, so we create the output, and again, you can add as many different options as you want, up to five, um, to trigger this output. Now, 
what is the output going to do? So first we're going to go to the pin map, view output, and there it is, safety output, right? Well, we don't need to pin it anywhere, but if you don't like that annoying pop-up that keeps coming back and tells you that it's not pinned anywhere, then drag and drop it to a pin that you're not using, right? You don't have to actually physically wire anything to it. So done. Now we're going to go to the boost ICF. Now, again, if you're in a nitrous car, if you're an all-motor car, if you're a blower car and you don't have the boost ICF, it doesn't matter. You don't need to do anything with it, but enable it. So go to toolbox, add individual config, add the boost ICF. Either one doesn't matter. And uh, we're going to go to the boost ICF. And right here is a safety setup. So switch trigger when safety out is active for 0.2 seconds, we're going to cut ignition. So anytime, again, these outputs go active, any or this output goes active based off of any of these parameters, it's going to cut ignition. It's got to be active for 0.2 seconds, okay? So we can change that 0.2 to 0.5. We can change that 0.2 to 1 second, whatever you want to do. But, um, you know, as long as it's active for 0.2 seconds, it's going to cut ignition. So that's how you save your motor. Um, you got to shut it off in order to save it. Another thing that we can look at is um, uh, this, the same, in essence, the same thing we just did with oil pressure here. Uh, we can also do, uh, this has been something that um, uh, quite a few of us that, that, that do methanol cars a lot have been doing for a little while. Um, it helps keep rods in the motor um, if you accidentally ride the high chip. So what we can do here is we go to table seven. We're going to enable it. It's going to be a fuel flow offset again. And um, I'm sorry, we're going to go to a 1D table. And uh, it's going to be a fuel flow offset. And the x-axis is going to be RPM. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to, if our high chip is at, nine, let's just say it's at 9,500, okay? 9,500, and then here we're going to put, um, maybe we shift the car at 8,800, right? Uh, let's set this at 9,000. All right, so we get a decent bit of resolution here. Actually, we can do it here. Uh, not there. There we go. Left click, drag, right click, fill row values. So we got a decent bit of resolution. So as we're getting close to 9,500 on that high chip, if you've got a motor that makes some power and it zips the tires, maybe in high gear or something, 9,500 is coming up quick. And this is how you hurt parts. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull fuel out of it. So uh, just like we did with oil, for oil pressure. So at 9,500, we want to subtract 4,000 pounds per hour of fuel. And we want to subtract, if we're shifting the car, remember we said about 8,800? Um, let's let it go to 9,100 before, uh, before it really starts to, uh, to have a problem. Now, what some people have done is they've, they've done this, right? and they've gradually removed fuel out of it, that's a problem. Gradually removing fuel out of it is going to burn something up. So we're going to undo that. We need to be aggressive and remove it all, because if there's no fuel in the in the cylinder, it can't burn anything, okay? It's just a spark plug in there being pissed off and not being able to do anything. Um, but if there's a little bit of fuel in it, it's going to light a fire, and then it's going to find somewhere else to burn. So we can, we're also going to do a timing offset the same way I like to do both. Um, it's just a safer way of doing things. So we're going to grab it at 9,200. And um, from here to 9,200, we're going to yank 4,000 pounds per hour of fuel clean out of it. So remember, 9,200 to 9,500, we're yanking 4,000 pounds of fuel out of it. Now we want to enable a timing offset based off of RPM again. And we're going to do the same thing, 9,500, and we're going to go to 9,000. Same deal. So right here, we're going to minus 30. And uh, I'm sorry, that was a little bit too much. Let's go minus 20, because if we're that high RPM, we... Uh, 
<clears throat> we don't have that much timing in it. So there we go. We're going to knock 20 degrees of timing out of it as well. So when this thing reaches 9,200 RPM and it's singing along on its way to the high chip and the, the rod bending area, uh, we're knocking 20 degrees of timing out of this thing and 4,000 pounds per hour of fuel. If we got no sparky spark, we got no fuel, we got no bent rods. So um, big turbo or blower methanol combos, this is really the uh, – this is advantageous for those for those types of combinations. So uh, hopefully some of these safety ideas uh, you can. The whole idea here with this video is to try to drive you to think outside of the box and um, and apply what I'm showing you here to your combination to make it work well for you. So uh, obviously if you've got a if you've got a nitrous combo and you know you can. You know, you can knock nitrous out of it or fuel out, whatever you want to do, timing out of it, however you want to do it. Um, but, you know, this is just kind of some examples to show you don't take my, you know, my minus 20 and minus 4,000 and put it in there. Because if you got a big block blower combo that's using 7,000 pounds per hour of fuel, you now just burnt it up. So, um, you know, be, be, uh, be conscious of what you're doing. So, anyway. Hopefully, y'all guys learned something about safeties and how to make them all work. Again, you create that output, and uh, you can make it trigger off of whatever you want. So, all right. Hopefully, this helped you. See you guys.